And according to EN 1822 or ISO 29463, we classify our filters and give them certain names. <clears throat> so if you look at the comparison here, what would be a H13 filter according to EN 1822, which would be 99.95% efficient, would be equivalent to an ISO 35H according to ISO 29463. And these are both efficiencies at the MPPS. And the same with a, a, a H14 or a U16 or whatever classification you want to call. And a little rule of thumb is, if you're talking about, for instance, a H14 filter, H14 means four nines. So your efficiency at MPPS will be 99.995, four nines. The equivalent filter in ISO 29463 would be ISO 45H. And again, here we have 45, four nines and a five. So 99.995, just to give you a rule of thumb for figuring out what your efficiency is from the filter classes. But whatever choice of filter you decide to use, whether it's H13, H14, H13 and a half in the case of ISO 29463, please make sure you get advice from the industry specialists. And always be sure that you get a test cert relevant to the current standard. And on those test certs, what should you typically get? Well, typically, <clears throat> it's got to tell you how the test is being carried out. So according to what standard, in this case, EN 1822, it's got to give you the type of equipment used, the laser scan test, and give you a particle distribution at a number of particle sizes. It must give you the date and the time of the test, so where it was carried out, when it was carried out. It should also give you the minimum and maximum particle count over the time intervals of the test. So it's quite a detailed piece of, a, of paperwork. It should obviously give you the filter description, the target results, and the efficiency targets, and also the, uh, the article number of that filter, the lot number, the customer number if relevant, and the unique serial number relating to that filter. And importantly, the efficiency at MPPS of that filter in order for you to get the classification. It should give you the number of particles before and after the filter. That'll give you the filter class. And then it should give you environmental information like the temperature on the day of the test, the position of the test filter, and items unique to that filter. So again, a very, very detailed test certificate. But whatever test standard this filter is tested to, please be clear that a real test certificate is vital. Do not accept non-compliant test certificates. Always ask for a full test certificate according to whatever standard you are complying with, either 29463 or EN 1822. That's the best way to work and have good compliance on site.